Good evening. My name is Rodney Mitchell. I'm a sergeant with the Paulding County Sheriff's Office Juvenile Division. And this evening, I'm going to be reading to you a book called Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions. It's written by Chris Barton and illustrated by Don Tate. Starts off. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson. The challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't any room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits. Man. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them. And he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever had graded his test hadn't met Linex. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linex. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linex's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linex. And as a bonus, the reels look like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linex. Science fairs came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie. Look, there's a picture of Linex right there. Not too shabby. So Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions precisely defined problems and formulated solutions. And he stood out as a guy who built his own booming sound system off cast off electronics. It even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off though. He became an engineer after graduation and that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. There's Lonnie jamming out, having all sorts of fun. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it? Honey. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy. It wasn't obvious. But Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced him it would. He was right. As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at a risk in a power failure, if not for Lonnie. Check out Lonnie's little invention going on there. Very cool, very cool. Remember Galileo from when I was a kid. Hmm. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or even up late tinkering with his own inventions and finally his own workshop. Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system. One that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and a nozzle, connected him to a bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump. Whoosh! The stream that blasted out across the bathroom was so powerful, it created a curtain swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle, then he had to glue the parts together in a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. 
There's Lonnie with his big whoosh going on. I like it. I like it a lot. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it work? A man said. <laughs> you want to see? Lonnie asked. Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed air into a chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing water out with a whoosh. Check it out. It's a serious whoosh right there. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more. So he went to toy company after toy company after toy company. The word no flowed again and again, but finally one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself to full-time inventing. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was finally interested in seeing the water gun if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, pumped it full of air till it was good and high, and whoosh. There's his whoosh. Kids everywhere agreed with that. Wow. Lonnie's water gun called the Super Soaker became a smash hit. In no time, there were super soakers and playgrounds and backgrounds on beaches and parks. Each sale of a super soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours and all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He built a bigger workshop, which is where you still find him today because facing challenges Solving problems and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do. And his ideas just keep on flowing. Whoosh. If you guys enjoyed the book, check it out in one of your local libraries. I really enjoyed the story of Lonnie Johnson. And right here on the back, it's a Lonnie Johnson quote. I wanted to be an engineer before I knew what an engineer was. I was always curious to know how things worked. On the inside, Lonnie Johnson. Couldn't end it any better. Hope you all enjoyed the story. Hope you enjoy the rest of reading week. And we'll see you around in the community. Bye.